Okay, the, the title of my talk is Class Crisis and the Theory of the Social Structure of Accumulation. Uh, let me give you a, a, a few caveats before I even begin. And that is, I will be talking about neoliberalism in the paper, um, but really uh, I'm drawn from the U.S. experience. I think there's a case to be made about some of the things I'm saying to apply to neoliberalism as a global system, but I'm not making that in this paper, so I just want to be clear. And also, this is an attempt at a kind of a big picture or uh, 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 some big ideas and so I think we should look at this as kind of a, a kind of hypothesis. Uh, this, is, this is not a careful documentation of uh, facts and figures and historical evidence. Um, and I'm appreciative to Victor for his, his excellent uh, paper that did, did, in fact, do a lot of that. So I think this is perhaps a good compliment to Victor's paper. Um, Finally, uh, you'll see as I progress that there's some overlap with the paper that David Cox gave last night. Uh, this is partly the fact we've done some joint work uh, together. But I think uh, we, we uh, may approach it in uh, significantly different ways to, to engender some interesting discussion, hopefully. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start with the uh, theory of a social structure of accumulation from the literature and uh, the main ideas I take from it, which we've had some discussion about last night, is that the SSA uh, is composed of a group of institutions that promote economic growth. And I think there, there are really two variants in the literature. <coughs> uh, and they come from the uh, work, I think, of David Gordon with two sets of co-authors, uh, the initial work with uh, Mike and with uh, Rick Edwards, I think focused on the institutions as providing a stable environment, uh, conducive and encouraging of investment. Uh, not that necessarily the economic environment would be necessarily stable itself, but at least the institutional structure was reliable enough to uh, encourage investment. Uh, in, in David Gordon's later work with Sam Bowles and Tom Weisskopf, the emphasis, I think, shifted to a different perspective, and that is that the institutions were primarily designed to enhance capitalist power. And that was the way to understand them. So I think two different perspectives. <coughs> so that's the, uh, as I say, the crisis the SSA exists when these institutions are no longer promoting economic growth. Now, it's a crisis of the old SSA in the sense that the old institutions are still exist, but they're not performing the task uh, of promoting economic growth. Either uh, the, the growth of the system has destabilized the institutions, or uh, the institutions themselves are providing a barrier to growth under changed economic conditions, very much akin to Marx's idea of uh, the relations of production as a fetter upon the forces of production. So the crisis of an SSA uh, brings the need for the creation of new institutions. Now, um, the, uh, a key issue I want to um, discuss is how to understand neoliberalism, and I mean the free market environment within the United States, uh, in the context of SSA theory. <coughs> so, is a, uh, can we consider neoliberalism a crisis of the old post-war SSA? Um, well, if we consider neoliberalism the kind of the institutional structure that we have already discussed thus far in the conference regarding uh, uh, free market, deregulation, privatization, liberalization, globalization, and so forth, uh, it's a very different institutional structure than what we had and what Victor described earlier in the post-war SSA. Um, so I think 
uh, if a crisis is is the, the situation where the set of old institutions are no longer functioning to promote growth, this isn't really a crisis of the old institution if we consider the period, say, from 1980 onwards uh, as the neoliberal period. Um, so it, it, those institutions are gone. So it's not, I would argue, a crisis of the old SSA. And um, is it a new, a new SSA? Well, I, I know some people have argued that, and I think this will be a good point of discussion during this whole conference. Um, but I would argue it's, it is, in fact, a new institutional structure, and it is a restoration of capitalist power. So from those two perspectives of how to define an SSA, it has established uh, that, that aspect of it. However, um, it hasn't restored the, the strong economic growth that we would expect from uh, the creation of a new social structure of accumulation. Okay, uh, well, if it's not an SSA, uh, what is it? All right, so I understand that. I want to, uh, I think, introduce some, some uh, other ideas into the SSA theory, which I think are sort of implicit in some formulations of SSA theory, but not explicitly. <coughs> And uh, that's the idea of uh, class and class contradiction. And I understand contradiction as a dialectical relationship between two groups uh, involving struggle between the two groups, which is ongoing, uh, but subject occasionally to temporary equilibriums, where there's uh, the, the struggle is muted and um, there's a, a temporary and if we take a capitalist system, the fundamental contradiction here is between capital and labor, though I think in, in a more nuanced analysis, which I'm not going to make today, but in a more nuanced uh, analysis, we could include other contradictions, uh, intra-capital, intra-labor, international, uh, and there's an important role for uh, uh, finance, gender, and race in these uh, and analyzing these contradictions as part of the, the SSA analysis. I think those issues are uh, somewhat uh, neglected in, in, in some of the formulations of SSA theory. <coughs> okay, with that as a little bit of a background, I think the way to understand neoliberalism, neoliberalism then, um, uh, is really as a stage of capitalism as institutional structures that represent the temporary stabilization of the class contradiction between capital and labor. So that in this dialectical <laughs> contradiction between capital and labor, in this struggle, there are uh, at various times uh, an equilibrium in that struggle. And the institutional structure that's created is representative of that uh, equilibrium. And uh, it's long-lasting, but really not permanent, because that struggle is ongoing, and it's undermining the, the, exist, the uh, equilibrium that's set up, and it's undermining the uh, institutions that are created on the basis of it. So the way to understand neoliberalism, then, uh, is, the, uh, is a dominance of capital over labor. And the free market uh, promotes capital mobility, labor market flexibility, and undermining of the social safety net, protections for labor, and so forth, all with, the, all with I think, um, the objective of undermining labor's power and enhancing uh, uh, capitalist profit. The post-war SSA, then, I, I would argue, uh, represents a relative balance between... Man, my watch really must be slow. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right. Well, um, so the plus four SSA is then a relative balance between capital labor and, and involving protections for labor, uh, social safety net, a lot of which were established in the uh, 1930s. Um, and interestingly, uh, as opposed to the analysis by Bowles, Gordon, and Weisskopf, I'd say the post-war SSA is a relative balance then between capital and labor as opposed to in, in the enhancement of capitalist power. <coughs> okay. Um, so, and um, some uh, <coughs> further uh, hypotheses I'll throw out here for your consideration, as long as you don't throw them out <laughs> too quickly. Um, I'd argue that there's a tendency in the free market period that for capital to become too strong. Um, that there becomes uh, overcapacity problems, uh, sluggish growth. I think that's perhaps maybe one of the reasons behind the, the relatively slower growth under the neoliberal, neoliberalism period and uh, some tendency toward underconsumption crisis. Um, in, the, uh, in the regulated period, there's more balance, <coughs> there's more stimulus to aggregate demand, and I would argue that the regulated period would be indeed the social structure of accumulation, would be the period that promotes um, rapid growth. But that, um, in some of the things that Victor described, toward the end of the regulated period, uh, there becomes increasing pressure, at least there was in, in post-war SSA in the U.S., and a tendency toward a profit squeeze crisis. Okay, um, then I think there's, uh, there's also a tendency, uh, as Polanyi organized, uh, 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 hypothesized, for a uh, double movement then between the free market and regulated period, and, and pressures developing within the regulated period to move to a free market, and the free market period, uh, pressures moving to a, um, a regulated uh, economy. Um, but given my time, I won't uh, go into that uh, very, very much. Um, so let me just summarize then. Uh, I think these are some of the, the issues that uh, would would uh, strengthen the uh, social structure of accumulation analysis if we could explicitly uh, incorporate them into the theory. And that is the explicit analysis of class and class contradictions, and as Victor mentioned, the uh, internal contradictions uh, between capital and labor motivating change in the system. Uh, <coughs> to view uh, stages of capitalism, not only, not just a growth period, associated with the social structure of accumulation and a crisis of that period, but uh, qualitatively different stages of capitalism. One, a uh, regulated environment, another, <coughs> more free market environment. Uh, capitalist crises associated with those, and uh, the idea of the double movement. So finally, to uh, summarize and conclude, uh, the uh, 40s through the 60s was a capital labor balance, the social structure of accumulation, the post-war SSA, which has been much analyzed, the late 1960s and uh, into the 70s to some extent, the profit squeeze crisis, the 1970s, uh, a crisis then of the old SSA, uh, the old SSA institution still in existence for the most part, but no longer functioning to promote growth in the same way, and intense uh, capital-labor conflict, uh, as Victor was mentioning. Um, and then, uh, beginning in the 1980s, the domination of capital, the institution of the neoliberal regime, the free market environment in the U.S., and in the, the globalized economy for, for the most part. Um, now, there's an interesting uh, question and this came up in Victor's paper also, uh, you know, in 1995 to 2000, we saw uh, significantly stronger growth than we had seen uh, since 1980. Um, 
We had strong growth, we had low unemployment, low inflation in the United States. Uh, is this a new SSA? Uh, that's, a, that's a good uh, point to discuss and debate during the conference. I would argue uh, that it's not a, a new SSA for the most part. <coughs> the institutional structure of neoliberalism was still existent, and that the growth we saw uh, is uh, now by now pooled, and I would argue had, had in fact been uh, unsustainable in any event uh, based on speculation and uh, debt growth. So, uh, finally, my final point. Uh, what's on the current agenda? Well, if this theory I was laying out uh, has any relevance, uh, that there should be some reaction to the inequality and instability of neoliberalism, and uh, there should be uh, perhaps uh, at some point, hopefully, a, uh, a new regulated period or some uh, fundamental change. Uh, I do not expect neoliberalism to go on. Forever, and fortunately, I am not going.